Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson at Infinity Whole Health, and please check out our podcast site at Revealing Wholeness. And tonight it's the 25th of November. It's the day before Thanksgiving and the whole month of November is Thanksgiving. And gratitude Thanksgiving is wonderful for the heart as we talked about two weeks ago on the 11th when I shared about how do we improve heart function and what are the external things that we can avoid. And so tonight is all about the internal things that we can do to build the heart. And in doing so, I have a treat for you. I'm gonna be looking at three different graphs of, of young people, old, older people, and we're going to look at before and afters of them going through a program to strengthen and rebuild their heart. So let's share that right now so that you can see what that looks like. And I'm going to share my screen here. There it is. And if we're looking, I'm going to drag this down just a little. Good. So we're looking at a heart scan and let's get normal up there. So here we have normal. Normal scan should look like this. And when we were in school, they said, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. If they didn't teach you lub dub in school, well, you're being taught it now. And so when I was in school, they taught us that these two heart sounds, this lub dub, were the valves closing, lub dub. So we have two bigger valves closing and then two smaller valves closing. That's the first sound and the second or rather peaks that we see. And so as we look at my cursor here, this is that first lub and then the smaller dub. And in between it, we have a flat space and after we have a rest or flat space. So we have rest periods and we have periods of activation. And so this is a normal graph. This is a 68 year old male. And I'll point out the date right here, 326, 2020. So this is earlier this year. And here we have a heart that is really difficult to pick out a lub dub in any of them. So we looked at that normal sound. I'm gonna go back to it. Here's normal. This is what every valve should look like, rather what we see listening to every valve. And so now I'm gonna to go to the next, that previous one that we were just at. And we see this mitral valve listed here, the tricuspid valve, the aortic valve, and the pulmonic valve. The pulmonic valve is the most important. When I see the pulmonic not good way down here at the bottom, we see that the whole heart is not good. And so we have some rest periods like here up in the tricuspid, the mitral is a little bit bumpy, but we see like this is just chaos in the pulmonic. This is not happy. And so here is the same person, 68 year old male, and this is on 10 to 2020. Here we see a mitral, a tricuspid, aortic, and a pulmonic again, but look at this pulmonic. It's beautiful. Now, is this a wonderful first sound? Well, it's not ideal. Let's go back to normal so we can look at it. It should be building up and going away. Nice big sound. Second sound, very small, very minor. So let's go back to that. And so here we see, you know, this nice little split in the middle of that first sound. And okay, so we still have some things to do, but isn't it amazing? I mean, look at this mitral valve, how still and silent that rest period, that's a heart that literally pulls those valves together and can rest. It's awesome. And so it's really neat to see this heart heal. I mean, look at this beautiful first sound on this tricuspid. A little bit bigger second sound, but again, we'll, we got things to do, we got things to work on, but let's look at the first one. Six months previous, this was not a good ideal heart. This was a very tired, fatigued, unhappy heart. And so now we go to a 26 year old male. So again, not very, look at this pulmonic. You can't even pick out a lub dub down here. It's just unbelievable. This is a 26 year old who had a heart surgery before this. And so he's been working on his heart even to this point. And we thought, okay, we, we've got to definitely step up your game and do some things differently. And so he did his, he changed a little bit of dietary stuff and he added more supplements. And now this is his second one. And again, I want you to understand that when I give, when I give, things to the heart that help it heal, I'll see changes immediately. And all three of these people that you're looking at, I told them for two days before your next heart scan, I want no supplements. I wanna know what your heart is standing on its own, on its own merits. I don't need it foisted up or, or you know, kind of st on stilts, so to speak, to try to look better than it is. I wanna know exactly what's going on. What do we still need to accomplish? And so here we have this post scan. And I mean, look at the pulmonic. We actually have a lub dub. Now I'll tell you, there's some crazy stuff happening at the beginning of the heart sound in here in this first sound. But again, I've got flat spaces. I've, I can actually tell what we're looking at now. 
The mitral, you know, again, we have a split here like we saw in the last individual, an extra sound right here, but we're getting more and more stable. The tricuspid, same thing, more and more stable. Let me pull up the first one again. Kind of crazy, you know, a lot of chaos in here. I mean, this mitral valve is so jagged, it's, it's, it's wild. And so now we see we actually got four sounds here that are very, in, we can see them. So we have done a lot of great work here. Do we still have things to do? Yes, but now we can reduce the protocol some and let the, let the heart continue to heal. This is a 61-year-old female. Again, 326. I'll pull up this 26-year-old male. 326. They're all done at the same time. So this one, again, mitral valve, cannot pick out a first or second sound anywhere. Tricuspid, we can somewhat. The aortic, we can somewhat. It's okay. The pulmonic, it's kind of a guess, but I'm going to assume this is a first sound. This is a second sound. It's pretty jagged all the way through as well. It's not very good. The next one, six months later, on 10 to 2020. Now, look at this radical change. We're seeing something here that's fairly common in individuals. So we're seeing a second sound here. I'm going to point to it. Second sound in the aortic, second sound in the pulmonic second sound in the tricuspid, all higher than the first. That's typically seen in stress. Well, was 2020 stressful or what? You know, so we've still got some things to do with this heart, but we have a heart that is much better at doing its job and it can actually rest. It's strong enough to keep those valves closed and not continuously regurgitate blood and spin its wheels and feel fatigued and not doing well. So again, how do we do this to a heart then? Let's talk about that. So when I deal with, with an organ system that's not good, and 200 years ago, if you had an organ system that was not good, you went and ate more of that organ. How many of you out there that might think you have a bad heart are gonna go out and eat three, four, five, six ounces of heart a day? Not many of us, if any. Maybe there's a few that would do it. I highly doubt it. I have eaten heart. I won't do it every day. But some of the supplements that I use have almost an ounce of heart in every pill. And some of those programs are three morning, three nights. So that's like six ounces of heart a day. But most of us just aren't gonna do that. So number one, the first thing you could do to help your heart is to eat heart. If you're not gonna do that, then we've gotta find those replacement parts in something else. And so you're gonna be doing things like B vitamins, but you're not gonna do synthetic garbage from a health food store or a grocery store that's all synthetically derived in a lab. You must get the real replacement parts so they actually stay in and do stuff. I remember being um, early, early 20s and I would play, play volleyball out, outdoors. And I loved playing grass and sand volleyball. And in the Midwest, they have these biting gnats or buffalo gnats. And they would literally be all over my face, constantly playing. And all my friends were not bothered. I'm like, what's going on here? And mosquitoes, when they were out high time, I would be attacked and they would all be left alone. Little did I know back then that my blood vessels were so swollen because I had no B vitamins that they could all smell me. And so they all congregated around me and would bite me incessantly. And now in Washington state, when I go hiking out where we have all these little lakes and streams and standing water and the mosquitoes can get really bad, I am almost never bothered now. I will see them flying around me, but they never land because they cannot smell me. Because as I took B vitamins, all those blood vessels shrunk back to the normal size, and now they can't smell me. They're like, he's around here somewhere. They would be close, but they would rarely ever land. And so it's wild to watch things improve within your own body and see other effects too. Because 10 years ago, I can tell you my heart did not look good as a hardcore athlete for many, many years. Mine looked much like these people. And now it looks much better. I still have things I'm working on in my heart. Many of us. We'll, we'll have things to work on maybe the rest of our life, but that isn't the point. The point is to get a heart that is now functional. You know what? I feel way better. I have so much more energy. So we're going to find that when we do B vitamins, you are going to be energized because they run energy. They run digestion. They run muscle pulling. They do so much for us in the human body. There are lesser B vitamins that actually are, are relaxing to a very tight and rigid vascular system like hardening of the arteries. We're under so much stress that we're constantly making our, our blood vessels very firm. And so I'll use relaxing B vitamins on occasion to help that like high blood pressure situations 
we'll use it there. But toning B vitamins for a heart that looks like this and for a pulse that's very low, we'll use those differently. So B vitamins become very important. Now, next is vitamin C and vitamin E. They are so vitally important to help the blood vascular system heal. As we lose vitamin C and vitamin E, our blood vessels crack. And I've talked about this at length in cholesterol talks, where as we bleed out and we bruise easily, cholesterol is going to come in and try to heal that crack. It's not the villain. It's the lack of vitamin C and vitamin E that is the issue. And so we want to supply the real replacement parts because if we're taking one component of vitamin C, like ascorbic acid, which is a preservative, and we're thinking we're taking the whole complex, we are not. There are 500 things that make up the entire vitamin C complex. And imagine if you went to a lab and tried to synthesize all 500 of them, including the minerals that were included. The cost would be astronomical. You wouldn't do it. But it's right there in our food if we'll get it. And so when I do foods with folks and supplements, it's whole food supplements. It's not whole food supplements like blue green algae where they spray vitamins and, and stuff on them and 10 minutes later harvest them and call it a whole food supplement because they're out there and they do that. This is actual food grown from the ground and harvested under 70 degrees and put in a pill so it's alive and it gets to you and I. If it wasn't alive, would I see changes like this on a heart graph? Not likely. In fact, one of the gals that saw me for this last scan in October, she had been taking a cardiac formula for seven years and her heart did not look good at all. And I looked at her point blank and I said, your cardiac formula is not working for you. It should look way, way better than this. And I showed her some pre and posts. And so it's unfortunate because we, as the lay public, we just don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And that's where we have to kind of share knowledge like I'm doing right now to try to get this information out so you understand that the heart's one of the easiest organs to heal. It can't stop. It has to heal on the fly. I challenge you to fix your car engine while you're driving at 60 miles an hour down the road. It's not real easy. And so that's kind of the heart. It has to be one of the fastest healing organs, and it is. We've proved it over and over and over in before and afters with this. So vitamin C, vitamin E, very important. Next is we're looking at minerals. So we're, we're going to mention things like calcium because calcium is, is contractile force of muscle, but it also helps relax the muscle. Potassium is so vitally important in making sure calcium is used correctly. And potassium helps depolarize nerves and make sure that our, our, our nerves actually tell our heart to contract correctly. And if we have placking in our arteries and hardening of arteries, some of that placking is also helped and transported or at least dissolved by pot potassium. And so it becomes very, very important to have that potassium in there helping. And I'm going to give you a bonus today. And so we talked about three things. We talked about eating heart, and if you can't do that, whole food vitamins, vitamin B, other B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, and then minerals, calcium and potassium. And so in order to get that stuff out of our body, the placking that may be occurring in your, in your arteries, we use raw apple cider vinegar or acidification of the gut. Anytime we're going to pull salts off the body like plaques, that's, that's salts of minerals, whether it's calcium or other minerals, they're very alkaline. When they hit the gut, they tend to wreck the gut. So your body will only detox as best as it can, as strong as your digestive system is. So acidification of the gut is A number one when it comes to detoxification and getting those products out of your blood vessels and then out of your body so that you can begin to be more flexible, more pliable, less stiff, and feel better and have blood pressure that's improving and a heart that's improving. So acidification of the gut is tremendously important. And raw apple cider vinegar is a whole nutrient. It has probiotic in it, it has trace minerals in it. It's a wonderful thing to be doing for everybody, not just those that are concerned of their heart, but it's a great way to kind of ensure your digestive system, which is part of our immune system and so vitally important in our immune system, especially at the end of here now when everybody's quarantined crazily enough again, when it's, I don't even get there or go there. But anyways, it's a very important part that way as well. So I hope that helps understanding maybe a little bit more about the heart and seeing some before and afters of what's capable. If you want to do that to your heart and you're concerned and you want a heart scan, please message me, contact the office, and we will get a scan for you. If you're out of state, I will find somebody that has a scanner and we can handle it from afar if we need to. But again, don't, don't just think there's nothing you can do because there's so much that we can do. So until next time, I'm Dr. Troy Munson, 
at Infinity Whole Health. And please, again, check out our podcast on revealing wholeness. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving.